Hello lovers of literature, hope you are doing well. So as promised to you, we bring new videos and that's how we enrich our love and our affection for literature. So last time if you remember, we were doing Marchant events. The last video that was uploaded was after Blenheim, which was a kind of deviation from what we were doing with Marchant events. So today we will be back again with the same play, but we will be dealing with another scene of the same act that is Act 2, Scene 2. Now, after the last rather serious scene in Belmont, that is Act 2, Scene 1, we return to Venice in this scene. And the initial emphasis here is on Launcelot Cobo, who is Shylock's servant and unthrifty knight. Launcelot over here is debating with himself as to whether or not he should continue his service with Shylock. He is tempted to leave and find employment elsewhere, but is unable to make up his mind. The decision is difficult, he says, for he feels the weight of his conscience hanging about the neck of his heart. And the court. That's what he says that he cannot leave because as of his conscience is continuously hunting him. Here is of course a comedy that is built in when Lancelot's father, Old Kobo, comes on stage. Old Kobo is more than sand blind and does not recognize his son. Sand blind is suppose you just throw sand on someone's eyes, that person gets blindness for a momentary. For, not for a long time, but for some moments, right? He's momentary. He does not recognize his son. He sees before him only the deep image of a man who hopes can direct him to Shylock's house. So he mistakes, he mistaken his son for someone else. He asks help to be directed to his son, who is a servant to Shylock. Launcelot is delighted to encounter his father, whom he has not seen for a long time. And so he conceals his true identity and playfully confuses the old man wherein the humor lies in the scene with much clowning and double talk before revealing who he, who he really is and kneeling to receive his father's blessings. So this is one part. First part starts as I, I did tell you that how Launcelot was debating with his own mind as to whether he should continue his service with Shylock or not. And the next part is the comedy is built in where, where the father comes of Kobo, but he cannot recognize his son. And Launcelot, in a light spirit, tries to confuse the old man. And therein, afterwards, he reveals that he is the son and seeks his father's blessings. Now, next part is Bassanio enters along with Leonardo and other followers and he is enthusiastically talking of the preparations for a dinner that night, complete with a mask, to which he has invited his friends to celebrate his departure for Belmont. So this is the dinner that he will give before he goes to Belmont. We already know why he will be going to Belmont, to seek the hand of Portia, where he will begin his courtship of Portia. Launcelot is quick to note Bassanio's good mood and he immediately speaks to him about Bassanio's hiring him as a servant. So Launcelot has made his mind that he will join Bassanio as a servant and he will not be in service to Shiloh. Bassanio agrees and orders a new set of livery for his new servant. It is a dress or, a, or the apple for the new servant. This is one part. This is the third part. Now the last part where the scene ends is Krishanyu enters looking for Bassanio and tells him that he also wants to go to Belmont with Bassanio because he has a graver motive. What is that? He wants to seek the hand of Norisa, which is Portia's attendant. Bassanio was hesitant at first but he finally consents, urging Krishanyu to modify his wild behavior. He says you need to be good in manners, which Krishanyu agrees to do. But he said that he will continue to do that from the next day. Tonight, he says, shall be a night of merriment. So 
three says tonight it is a light of merriment and of course he cannot be someone who is so polished and mannered and he says it is a night of a gala inauguration is setting out for Belmont so we are prepared for the upcoming scenes which will be not that light and frivolous because Bassanio is just trying to set on his journey for Belmont so that will be a tense filled scene that will be coming up quite later in act 3 so act 2 scene 2 is completely a light comedy uh, which highlights the comedy the humor the change of service of Launcelot so we get more of how Shylock is as a person is from him that we get that inference we get from here so these all are quite important for this scene okay this scene prepares us for the upcoming scenes this is not the main scene but these kind of scenes that we have quite a lot in act 2 prepares us for the more serious action of the play later okay so let us get into the scene after this and another thing there is more visual comedy in the scene so the comedy is more of visual visual in nature when the father and the son the two gobos confront Basanio at line 120 which will, we will be coming when we will be reading it is suggested by the lines the Launcelot bends down behind his father popping up to interrupt him at every other line and finishing his sentences for him this kind of comedy depends on visual and verbal confusion so the comedy if it is asked to you but what kind of a comedy it is it is a comedy more on the basis of visual and verbal confusion that is the answer to it especially when obvious words are mistaken and the obvious words and phrases are mistaken particularly characteristic of this clowning is the confusion of the word meanings so he says something wrongly and he means something wrongly that figure of speech is known as malapropism m-a-l-a-p-r-o-p-i-s-m what does it mean it means that you mistake your words for example he says fruitify but actually he means certify he says defect but actually he means effect he says exhibit but actually he means inhibit these are the words there which he deliberately does commit mistakes so this figure of speech is known as malapropism which comes from a character mrs malaprop in sheridan's novel sheridan is an author so from there this character mrs malaprop used to deliberately say words differently to give a humorous effect to the readers okay so this is done purposely and of course towards the close of the scene two more details of the central plot that i already told you are developed first launcelot leaves shylock's household for bassanio this prepares us for a similar or a greater deflection from Shylock by his daughter. In the next scene, we are going to find how after uh, Lancelot leaves Shylock, daughter Jessica also plans to leave Shylock and join Grishanio. Sorry, joins, of course not Grishanio, Bassanio's friend to have his hand for marriage, that is Lorenzo, and tries to be a Christian. So that is one part, that is one main thing that will be followed just after these scenes. So it makes it possible for Launcelot to appear at Belmont in the final act, where a little of his clowning adds to a general good humor. Second, another, Grishanio announces his intention of going to Belmont. So we are prepared that Grishanio also has an inclination towards Portia's attendant, that is Nerissa. So he must be there to marry Narisa and take part in the comedy of the ring story later in Act 5, which ends the play with light-hearted and teasing bits. 
So this is how the scene ends. This is the more or less the analysis of the scene. Hope it is clear. If not, of course, you know what you need to do. You need to put your doubts, your confusion, your feedbacks in the comment section. So let us get into it. Launcelot says, scene 2, Venice, a street, enter Launcelot. I already mentioned Launcelot is the servant to Shylock. Launcelot says, certainly my conscience will serve me to run from the shield, my master. So my conscience should certainly help me run away from this Jew, who is my master. So his conscience already tells him to run away. The fiend is at my elbow. Fiend is devil. But there is a conflict between the devil and his conscience. The devil stands close to me and tempts me. Okay? So in us also, there is always a conscience and a counter-conscience backing. Whosoever means the good or the bad spirit. So similarly here too, we find that for onslaught. His conscience is telling him to stay. The devil is asking him to leave. Okay? Gobo, Launcelot Gobo, good Launcelot, or good Gobo, or good Launcelot Gobo, use your legs. Take the start, or run away. So just use your legs, make haste, and run away. My conscience says, now the conscience battles and say, says, no, take heed, honest Launcelot. So take care, honest Launcelot. Honest Gobo, or as aforesaid, honest Launcelot Gobo, did, do not run. So this good conscience is giving him counsel that please do not run, you should not escape. Scorn running with thy heels. So rebuff the thought of running away. Just do away with the thought of running away. Well, the most courageous fiat bends me back. Be, sorry, beads me back. Via says the fiant. Away says the fiant. So the devil begs him to pack up and run away. Via means be on your way. And the fiant, the devil says, away says the fiant for the heavens. Says for the heavens sake, just run away. Do not be in service to this man that is Shylock. For the heavens, rouse up a brave mind, says the fiant, and run. So awaken the brave mind in you and just run away. Well, my conscience hanging about the neck of my heart. So my conscience, which is clinging to my heart, says very wisely to me. The conscience says to him quite wisely. What does it say? My honest fiant, Launcelot, being an honest man's son. So you are an honest friend, Launcelot. You are an honest man's son. Okay? So honest man's son as you are. Or rather an honest woman's son. Well, my conscience says, Launcelot, budge not. That means Launcelot, do not move as you belong to a good family. Budge, says the fiat. But the fiat and the devil tells me, run away. Budge not, says my conscience. Conscience, say I, you counsel them. Fiat, say I, you counsel them. So I tell both of them that you give me good advice. God bless the mark. Now this is a phrase used to word of evil. As Lancelot mentions the devil, which is supposed to bring on evil. Always devil brings on evil. So that's why he says, God bless the mark. Means God bless the voice of the devil. It is a kind of devil and to run away from the Jew. I should be ruled by the fiat. So he says that this is for the time with all due respect, I beg your pardon. And Launcelot seems to ask pardon for mentioning the devil because according to the Christian rules, one should not mention the devil. Certainly, the Jew is the very devil incarnation. Very important line this is. What do we get of Shylock's character from 
his servant. So for objective questions, as you people are preparing, you need to remember each opinion, each line. So this is quite important. Jew is the very devil incarnation. And in my conscience, my conscience is but a kind of hard conscience. So he says that incarnation, just look at this word. It's also malapropism. I told you, I'm repeating once the spelling. M-A-L-A. P R O P I S M. What is it? You confuse one word for another, which creates a comic effect. This is a figure of speech. Actually, it means incarnate, but he says incarnation. Okay? So, incarnation here means a devil in the flesh. So, Shylock is a devil in flesh. And in my conscience, my conscience is but of. But a kind of hard conscience to offer to counsel me to stay with the Jew. So my conscience is quite hard with me. It counsels me or advises me in spite of the hard dealings with the Jew that I should stay with the same. The fiant gives the more friendly counsel. The fiant or the devil is more of a friend to me. Why? Because it tells him to run away. I will run Fiant. So he finally agrees to the voice of the devil. He says, I will run away Fiant. My heels at your commandment means I am at your call. I am at your command. I will run. So I will run away. Enter old Gobo. Now comes the next part of the scene. Okay. The first part is over. The dualism between the conscience of from Gobo and the devil. And who wins? The devil. Gobo says, Enter old Gobo with a father with a basket. Master, young man, you, I pray you, which is the way to Master Jew's? So, young man, I request you to tell me the way to Master Jew's house. Launcelot, aside. What is aside? I told you before too. Aside means when the character is not talking to the other character present, but to the audience. So the audience gets a better picture of what is going on in the mind of Launcelot. So this figure of speech is done to make the audience know more of the mind of his character. Okay? So this aside is a figure of speech. So what does Launcelot say is, Oh heavens! This is my true begotten father. So he says that this is my father, true begotten father. This is of course a joke because it is a father who begets the son, isn't it? Does a son begate a father? No. It's a joke. This is my true begotten father who being more than sand blind, sand blind means half blind, high gravel blind, so almost completely blind, stone blind, knows me not. So my father cannot recognize me. I will try confusions on him. So he says, I will try out different tests on him just to create some fun element. Master, young gentleman, I pray you, which is the way to Master Jews? He asks once more. Launcelot says, Turn up on your right hand at the next turning, but at the next turning of all, on your left, marry. That is, marry is by the oath of Virgin Mary. Okay? At the very next turning, turn off no hands, but turn down directly to the Jew's house. So go to your right at the next turn, but at the next turn to your left, I swear by the Virgin Mary, at the very next turning, but don't turn to any side, and turn down directly to the Jew's house. That's just the direction. By God's sentis, that is, by God's sense, sentis sense. It will be a hard way to hit. So by God's sense, that will be a hard path to take. Why? Because indirectly he is trying to tell that the Jew is not a soft man. Can you tell me whether one Launcelot that dwells with him, dwells with him or not? So can you just give me more of information about Launcelot? Okay. Talk you of young Master Launcelot? So are you talking about Master Launcelot? Aside. 
Now again he tries to tell us, mark me now. Now will I raise the water before you. Observe me now. Now I will bring tears to his eyes. Talk you of young master Hansua? So I will bring tears to his eyes. Creates a storm because of the news he is about to give. No master, sir, but a poor man's son, his father. So he is not a master, but a poor man's son. His father, though I say it, an honest, exceeding poor man, and God be thanked well to leave. So he praises his own father and he says, His father, although I say it myself, is an honest but exceedingly poor man, and thanks to God that he is alive and well. Well, let his father be what we will. He will, okay? We talk of young Master Launcelot. I want to know more of Master Launcelot. Your worship's friend and Launcelot, sir. So, yes, sir. Your worship's friend, Launcelot. But I pray you, Argo. Argo is Latin for therefore. So, it's therefore. Okay? <clears throat> but I pray you, Argo, old man, Argo. Therefore, old man, I beseech you, talk you of young Master Launcelot? So, are you talking about Master Launcelot? Of Launcelot, and please your mastership. God, Gobo invents this word, mastership, there is no word as such, has been suitable for one who so insists on calling Launcelot master. As he is going on calling Launcelot master, so he says mastership. Argo Master Launcelot, so therefore Master Launcelot, talk not of Master Launcelot, father, for the young gentleman, according to pets and destinies, so talk not of Master Launcelot's father, for the young gentleman, according to fates and destinies, so in ancient Greece, the fates were said to be three sisters who controlled human destiny. So this is again Greek illusion. Fates and destinies and such odd sayings, the sisters three, as I told you, are considered to be three sisters and such branches of learning is indeed deceased. So such odd sayings, the three sisters of fate, and such branches of learning is indeed dead, as you would say, in plain terms, gone to heaven. So he says, Shakespeare seems to be mocking at frequent mention of the feds and such classical and therefore learned allusions in contemporary speech and writing. So he brings in classical allusion over here. All these allusions are very, very important. Biblical allusions, classical allusions. There's a difference. Biblical allusion is referenced to the Bible and classical allusion is referenced to the Greek mythology. So this is a classical or a Greek illusion. So he says, or as you say in plain words, it's gone to heaven. So you is emphasis here as opposed to how I, that is Lancelot speak. That is the grand lofty manner, old Kobo's speech is plain as compared to Lancelot, eloquent style. Lancelot speaks in eloquent style. Why? To create the fun element. I told you it is are humor that is provoked by verbal confusion. Okay, so that is brought out by Gobo. Not by old Gobo, but only by Gobo. Mary, God forbid. So he says, by Virgin Mary, God forbid. The boy was the very stuff of my age. So of course, at the son's death, as has been mentioned, to create a humor. He says that, that the boy was the very stuff for support of my old age. Prop is support. Do I look like a cudgel? So aside, now again he says, he's taking the fun out of it, right? He says, do I look like a cudgel or a hobble post, stuff or a prop? So do I look like a short, thick stick or hobble post or a main timber or a wood supporting a poor dwelling? Do you know me, father? Can you see me, father? Alack, the day I know you not, young gentleman. But I pray you, tell me, this is my boy. So he says, alas, the day I don't know you, young gentleman. Still, still cannot recognize. 
So he says, tell me, is my boy, God rest his soul, alive or dead? So God me, rest his soul, tell me whether he is alive or dead. Do you know me, father? Do you not know me, father? So don't you recognize me, father? Alack, sir, I'm sand blind, I know you not. So I'm half blind, I do not know you. Nay, indeed, if you had your eyes, you might fail of knowing me. So even if you had eyes, you might have failed to recognize me. It is a wise father that knows his own child, so he's trying to tell that you are not a wise father who does not recognize his own child. Well, old man, I will tell you the news of your son. Give me your blessing. He falls down and says, old man, give me blessings. Kneels down. Truth will come to light. So the truth will come to light. Okay. Uh, so the real truth that I am your son will come to light. Murder cannot be hid long. That is, this deceiving of the truth cannot be hidden long. A man's son may, but in the truth will out. So a man, man's son, your son may hide, but in the end, truth will of course come out. The truth will of course be revealed that I am your son. That's what he says. Pray you, sir, stand up. I'm sure you are not Lancelot, my boy. So he says, I beg you, sir, stand up. I'm sure you are not Lancelot, my boy. Pray you, let's have no more fooling about it. So I pray you, let's not uh, fool around about this. But give me your blessings. I just seek your blessings. I am Lancelot, your boy that was, your son that is, your child that shall be. So, I am your son, who was your boy, now your son, and will always be your child. I cannot think you are my son. So, I cannot think that you are my son. I know not what I shall think of that, but I am Lord Swan. So, I don't know what to say of that, what to think of that, but you cannot think of me as your child. But I am your child, the Jew's man. Jew's man is the Jew's servant. And I'm sure Marjorie, your wife, is my mother. And I'm sure Marjorie, the name of Lancelot's mother, or old Gobo's wife, is my mother. Her name is Marjorie indeed. I'll be sworn if thou be Lancelot. So I can swear that you are Lancelot now. Thou art my own flesh and blood. You are my own son, made up of, made up of my own flesh and blood. Lord worshipped might he be. May the Lord be praised. What a beard hast thou got? So he says, what a beard you have got. Thou hast got more hair on thy chin than Dobbin fill my horse has on his tail. So he says, the kind of beard you have grown is more than my horse Dobbin has on his tail. So this is a cart horse, okay? Fastened by two shafts. At the front of the carts. Rising, it should seem then that Dobbin's tail grow backwards. I'm sure he had more hair of his tail than I have of my face when I last saw him. Then he says, Dobbin's tail apparently grow backwards. I am sure he had more hair on his tail than I have on my face the last time I saw him. So last time I did not have so much of beard than I have it now. Kapo, Lord, how thou, how art thou changed? So how have you changed? How dost thou and thy master agree? How do you and your master agree along? I have brought him a present. How agree you now? So I brought him a present. How do you get along now? Well, well, but for my own part, as I have set up my rest to run away, so I will not rest. So, well, as far as I am concerned, I have decided or made my mind that I will not stay here till I have run some aground. So, I will not rest until I have covered some distance. My master is a very Jew. So, my master is a Jew in the truest sense. The hard-hearted man. A statement that is very important is it reflects the prejudice against Jews during Shakespearean times. Gives me a present, gives me a halter. So my master gives me a rope to hang himself with. 
I'm famished in a service, so I'm starving in a service. You may tell every finger I have with my reeds. So you can even count the bone of my reeds. I have become so thin. Father, I'm glad you have come. Give me your present to one Master Basanio. So give your present instead instead of giving to Shylock. I give I shall give it to Master Basanio, who indeed gives rare new libraries, who gives servants new uniforms. If I serve not him, so if I cannot serve him, I will run as far as the god as any crown. So if I cannot serve Basanio, the good man, well then I should not stay on this beautiful earth. I should run away from this earth, from God's crown. Oh, rare fortune! This is apostrophe figure of speech. Why? Because fortune, which is an abstract entity, is evoked or addressed here. So it is apostrophe. He calls up in fortune and he says, "What a good luck! Here comes the man to him, father, for I am a Jew." So here comes the man himself. Let's go to him, father. Who is the man, Basanio? For I am a Jew. If I serve the Jew any longer, so if I serve the Jew, I will be turned into a Jew. That means I will turn into a hard-hearted man. Enter Basanio with Lord Leonardo and other followers. So Basanio enters. You may do so, but let it be so hasted. So Basanio is preparing for the dinner and the mask. Let supper be ready at the first. For this, by five o'clock, supper be ready by five o'clock at latest. So these letters delivered prove the libraries to making a desire of Rashanio to come anon to my lodging. So see that these letters are delivered and arrange for the uniforms to be made and ask Rashanio to come at once to my house. So these are the instructions that Rashanio gives to the servant. Now the servant exists. Exit. Sorry. Launcelot to him, father. So Launcelot said, "Let's go to him, father. God bless your worship. So God bless your worship. Gramercy. That means many thanks from the French word grand mercy. This is the word grand mercy. It is many thanks. Who does thou ought with me? So do you want anything from me? Here's my son, a poor boy. Not a poor boy, sir, but a rich Jew's man. So he is not a poor boy." Is a rich Jew servant that would serve as my father shall specify. So who would serve as my father shall make clear. Gobo, he hath a great affection, sir, as one would say to serve. Here again, it is a malaprop. It's affection. Okay. So this is again a, prop, uh, a proper deflection in the word. It is actually affection, but it says infection. Please mark this. By now we have got two such words. This is the second one, infection. But actually it means affection. And the that one, son begetting father. Actually, father begets a son. That one too is a malapro. Lancelot says, indeed the short and long is, I serve the Jew and have a desire, as my father shall specify. So I have a desire of serving you, his master and he, saving your worship's reverence, a scarce cater cousins. So his master and you are hardly good friends. So of course it talks about how Basanio and Shylock are opposed to each other. Of course, because they are Christian and Jew, that is a very natural tendency during Shakespearean times. His master and he, saving your worship's reverence, are scarce cater cousins. So his master and he, with respect to you, sir, are hardly good friends. To be brief, the very truth is that the Jew, having done me wrong, doth cause me as my father, being I hope an old man, shall fortify unto you. So to be very brief, the truth is that the Jew, having done me wrong, has caused me as my father, being I hope an old man, shall inform you. Fortify here again is a problem. It is actually certify you or notify you. Okay, this is again malapropism. I have a dish of doves that I will bestow upon your worship. So I have the doves for making a meal, natural present in Italy. This is a good present. But a dove was a common article of food. It's a very delicious kind of dish. So I need to give that to you, bestow upon your worship. And my suit is, and my request is, in very brief, the suit is important to myself. To be very brief, the request is relevant to me. 
Lancelot says, As your worship shall know by this honest old man, though I say it, the old man, the poor man, my father. So this old man, his intentions are quite good. He is my father. He wants me to serve you. One speak for both. What would you? So let one of you speak for both. What do you want? Launcelot says, serve you, sir. This is the very defect of the matter, sir. So this is the very defect of the matter, which is actually again a malapropism. It's not defect, it's effect. So this is the very conclusion of the matter is, sir. I know thee well. Thou hast obtained thy suit. So I know you well. Your request has been granted. So yes, okay, you can serve me. Shylock, thy master spoke with me this day and I preferred thee. So Shylock, your master spoke to me today and has recommended you to me. If it be preferment, so if it is a promotion to leave due service, to become the follower of so poor a gentleman, I do not know whether it is a promotion to leave such a wealthy Jew, join such poor man as me in service. Here he tries to be humble enough. Bassanio is trying to be humble enough. The old proverb is very well parted between my master Shylock and you, sir. So the old proverb here, there is an allusion, Christian allusion, what is the proverb? The grace of God is gear possessions enough. The man who has the grace of God has all he needs for salvation, and that is what Bassanio has. As a Christian, as a Christian, sorry, Bassanio has the grace of God, is a wealthy man. Shylock has enough riches, but he does not have the grace of God. So here that is the old proverb, which is again a biblical allusion. So he says, to leave a rich you service to be, sorry, the old proverb is very well parted between my master Shylock and you, sir. You have the grace of God, sir, and he hath enough. So you have the grace of God, even though you're poor, but he has enough and he lacks the grace of God. Thou speakest it well, go father with thy son. So you say it well, go old man with your son. Take leave of thy old master and inquire my lodgings out. So take leave of your old master and come to my house. To his followers, give him a livery. So give him a uniform. With more garden than his fellows see it is done. With more ornaments and stripes than his fellow servants have seen it done. So he needs a more grand outfit. Trained with gold or silver braids. Launcelot says, Father in, I cannot get a sword with snow. I have never a tongue in my head well, looking on spum. So he says, Father come along, I cannot get a job, no. I can never speak for myself. Well, looking at his palm. If, excuse me, if any man in Italy have a favorite table which doth offer to swear up in a book, I shall have good fortune. So he says, I have a fortunate palm, I have fortunate luck. Okay, so he says that I have a fortunate luck. If any man in Italy has a more fortunate palm than mine, she offers to place up in the Bible when taking an oath, I shall have good fortune. So he actually makes fun by saying what he means, but he actually says the opposite. Okay, so again, this is the verbal confusion that is created, which creates the fun elements. Okay. Well, looking on his palm, hearing the rest of speech, Launcelot from 151, jokes by saying the opposite of what he means. I have head, this line 152, he says, I cannot speak for myself. Now the favorite table means a more favorable palm. Launcelot pretends to be a palmist, studying his palm and interpreting the lines of them. Now line 154, he says, offer this promise. Uh, to swear an oath by placing his hand on Bible, if any man has a good fortune, there is, there is an ellipse here. What is an ellipse? Suppression of a word or phrase that is technically necessary. The full sense of the lines are, I'm telling you, if any man in Italy can show an oath, a palm, which more favorable lines on it than mine, may I be hanged. That means I have the best fortune. If any man can show a better fortune than I have, 
I should be hanged. I would be vastly surprised, for certainly there is good luck in store for me. So he tries to say that he is the most fortunate man. Because he is granted to be in service by Basanyu. He has a small trickle of wives. Alas, 15 wives is nothing. So referring to the unbroken lines joining the base of the thumb to the light line said to indicate the number of wives the man will have. 15 wives is nothing. 11 widows and 9 men is a simple coming in for a man. Then to scrape drowning thrice and be to be in peril of life with the age of feather bed. Here are simple skips. So he says that we are a small unimportant one for marriage. Alas, 15 wives is nothing for a man. 11 widows, 9 medals are a modest income for a man. Then I will escape drowning three times. Be in danger of falling to my death from a feather bed. That kind of fortunate I am. There are simple escapes. Well, if fortune is a woman, he, she says, uh, he says, if fortune is considered to be a woman, she's a good lady for me, for this purpose of fortune telling. So, well, if fortune be a woman, she's a good wench for this gear. She is a good girl for this purpose. Father, come, I'll take my leave of the Jew in the twinkling of an eye. It means I'll leave the Jew just in a moment. So this part, line number 159, let us get into here. Peril means danger. To be in peril, feather bed. He says to be in danger of losing my life by falling over the edge of a feather bed. Although a feather bed has no edge, right? Because it is full of feathers. As mentioned earlier, Lancelot just jokes over in here. I told you that he means something and he Say something and mean something. He's trying to tell just that how beautiful my luck is that I'm sleeping on a feather bed. Launcelot jokes by saying what is not or cannot be. Feather bed can never have an age. So he tries to tell my life or my luck is so, so great that as if it is a fall from a feather bed. So we know that no one can fall from a feather bed as it is all marked with feather. A feather is something that is soft and something that is completely uh, it works good fortune so these are the two instances when he talks about the good fortune okay first is of course this part that uh, no man I, we can swear by the bible that no man has a better fortune and if they have then he may be hanged this is one number one and number two this one that the if he if anyone has a better fortune than him, it is as if that he is taking a flight or he is taking and making an escape from a feather bed. Okay? So these are the two instances. Exeunt Launcelot and Old Kobo. Now they move on. Now comes a very important part when Grashanyo tries to tell that how he also wants to join Basanyo. And that talks about Grashanyo's intention of joining in to U Narisa. I pray the good Leonardo think on this. These things being brought and orderly bestowed, I request you Leonardo to think of this. When these things have been bought and properly packed to return quickly for I do feast tonight, my best esteemed acquaintance, hi we go. So I am giving a banquet tonight for my most honored friend. Hurry up, go. So Basanio tells that you need to be proper with things because I am giving this party in honor of that I am going to Belmont. My best endeavor should be done eerie. Leonardo says, I put in my best effort. Integration. Where is your master? So, where is your master? Yonder, sir, he walks. Sir, he's walking over there. Krishanio, sit near Basanio. Mr. Basanio. Krishanio. I have a suit to you, I have a request to you, you have attended. You must not deny me, I must go with you to Belmont. Why then you must, but here the Krishin. It's okay, I agree to you, you may go, your request is already granted. But, thou art too wise, so your mannerisms are too rude, bold of voice. It's too outrageous, parts that become me happily enough. So you just become too happy, all by a sudden. Qualities are like that. Parts over here means in line number 178, qualities. 
becomes the even sutiyo. In such eyes as ours appear not faults. So in such eyes to us it does not appear to be a fault. But where thou art not known, why there they show something to liberal. But where you are not known, that there, there you might appear to be too free and easy. Line number 181, something to liberal means too free and easy, devoid of, devoid of etiquette and soberism. Okay? Soberity. I be misconstrued in places I go to and lose my hopes. So he says, I might be misunderstood in the place I go to and lose my hopes. So I might lose hope if you do behave like that. Prashanyo says, Sanyo, hear me. I, if I do not put on a sober habit, talk with respect, and swear, but now and then, wear prayer books in my pocket, look demurely. Nay more, while grace is saying, hoot my eyes, thus with my heart, and sigh and say amen, use all observance of civility. So he says, I will of course have a sober habit, implies that he will wear respectable clothes. 9 number 187. He is going to wear sober clothes and decent behavior. Okay, and line number 88, now and then, okay, he is going to carry, line number 189, he will carry prayer book to greet the impression of being a devout Christian man. And he will behave demurely and soberly. Line number 190, Grace is saying, so prayer is being said before meals. I'll just say my prayer before meals. Hood, cover, I'll cover. It's usual for people of high rank to keep their hats at the dinner table, especially at ceremonial feasts. So I will say Amen, line number 191. May it be so. So speaks that I, at, often at the end of prayer, I should say Amen, which is a way to be of sobriety and then line 192 use all observance of civility I will have all the outward manners of good appearance okay so these are these are the ways this part is important because for short questions it's quite important what are the different ways that Basanio sorry Grishanio promises to Basanio that he will keep up his mannerisms this part entirely important what are the different things he tells him to do like one, like one well studied in a sad or stead. Like one practices in a serious appearance, sad or stead means serious appearance, to please his granddad, so to please his grandmother, never trust me more. So never trust me again if I do not do all these things. When we shall see your bearing, okay, well, we shall see and watch your manners. Nay, but I bar tonight, but I tell you, please make an exception tonight. You shall not gorge me. Please do not judge me tonight. No, that were pity. No, that would be a pity. I would entreat you rather to put on your boldest suit of mark. I would rather ask you to put on your boldest and merriest manner. Why? For we all have friends here that purpose merriment. The purpose of this feast is merriment. Fare you well. I have some business. But now, for now, goodbye to you. I have some business to attend to. And I must to Lorenzo and the rest will be to visit you at supper time. So I must go to Lorenzo and the rest, but I will see you at supper time. So here the scene ends. So I hope, as I told you, the three parts of the scenes are already clear enough, right? For you to have a glance at. Let me recapitulate once in a very quick spree. We have first Launcelot trying to reason out with the spirit whether he should serve or not serve the master his master that is the jew the shiloh next is the second part where this full of humor full of figure of speeches verbal uh, comedy then of course we have visual comedy we have malapropism where enters in old kabo right so that is the part and after that, uh, Launcelot seeks service to Bassanio. And last part, which leads to the main plot, is where we have Grishanio trying to tell 
uh, to Bassanio that I too want to go along with you to Belmont. Why? Because the reason lies in that he wants to woo Larissa, which is again related to the main plot. So here is where the scene ends. Okay, the next two scenes are quite short in nature, which we will be dealing right away. Here comes in the act two, scene three. It is a very short scene and which is again, as I like, I did not tell you, but let me tell you, act two is more of such short scenes. It seems to be too long, but actually the scenes are short. It is easy to understand. So without further wastage of time, let us get into the scene three. In this scene, set in Shylock's house, okay? This first scene that's set in Shylock's house. We are introduced to Jessica, Shylock's daughter. She's speaking with Lancelot and she expresses a sorrow that he decided to leave his position as a father's servant. He, she says, our house is hell, she says. She herself says, so we get more of the nature of Shylock, does it? She stays in hell, and thou a merry devil, and you are, were a happy devil, didst rob it of some test of tediousness. So you are the only person who just got away, got me away from the boredom. She then gives a letter to deliver secretly to her lover Lorenzo, who is thy new master. So she gives the letter. That letter is of course a letter to Lorenzo because that talks about her, her eloping away with him. After Lancelot leaves, we discover that Jessica is planning to elope with Lorenzo. In addition, she is planning to renounce her father's faith and become a Christian. So the brief scene in Act 2 provides the final piece of plot exposition. What is that? We introduce to Shylock's daughter, Jessica. And in the first words, we have a clear idea about the relationship with the father. And we are receive some justification for a plan to leave the old moneylender's house. She says, what is the justification? Our house is hell. Under quote. A love letter to be given to Lorenzo with figure in the second of the plays, Love Appears. Second, okay, Graciano and Arisa will prove a third in the play. So we have three. Bassanio and Sportia, we have second Lorenzo and Jessica and we have the third Rochenio and Larissa. It is important that the audience in the scene and in the next scene be aware of Jessica's elopement with Lorenzo since it adds a heavy irony to Shylock's multiple warnings to his daughter in scene 5 to guard his house well. This scene related to scene number 5. It's an irony. That way. In this scene, Shylock is cast in the cliched role of a villain. Cliched role of a villain, primarily because of Jessica's remarks. But one should remember that in a romantic comedy, one of the fathers would have to be a villain. So that's a kind of setting. And Shylock is one. Here it is Shylock because he's a Jew. Interestingly, even though Jessica's intention to leave her father's household and rush into a lover's arms seems natural enough. Jessica is aware of the sin. Why? What is the sin? Being her father's child, is it? Being a Jewess is our fault. Finally, though, as a part of the romantic plot, all will be well with Jessica and she will be a part of the general happiness at the place end by being a Christian. So let us start the scene. Venice, a room in Shylock's house, enter Jessica and Launcelot. Jessica, I'm sorry. Thou wilt leave my father so. So I'm so sorry to hear that you are leaving my father. Our house is hell. Important line. Our house resembles a hell. Thou a merry devil. And if there is a devil which is merry, that is only you. Did us rob it of some test of tediousness? You did take away from it a little of its boredom. Be fa but fare thee well. So I fare you well. There is a ducat for thee. So there is a, a, a ducat for you. And Launcelot, soon at supper, shalt thou see. So and Launcelot, as soon as you see Lorenzo in the supper, 
who is thy new master's gate, the guest, who is Bassanio's guest, give him this letter. Do it secretly. So farewell. I would not have my father see me in talk with thee. So I do not want my father to see in talk with me. Adieu. Tears exhibit my tongue. So Ronsward says, tears exhibit my tongue. It is again a man of prophecy. It actually means tears inhibit my tongue. That is, tears prevent me from speaking. Most beautiful pagan, most sweet Jew, the most beautiful lady, the most sweet Jew. If a Christian do not play the knave and get thee, if the Christian does not act dishonest, of course a Christian will act dishonest to get marry a Jew, right? So if a Christian does not act dishonest and get you, I'm much deceived. I will be deceived, I will be disheartened. But adieu, this foolish drops to somewhat drown my manly spirit, adieu. So this tear droplets somewhat dampen my manly spirit and say it's goodbye. Farewell, good Lord Slot. So goodbye, good Lord Slot. Exit Lord Slot. Alack, what he has seen, it is in me. Now she speaks to herself. This is, of course, a soliloquy. She says, what a dreadful scene it is for me to be ashamed to be my father's child. But I am ashamed of being my father's child. But though I am a daughter to his blood, though I am a daughter shaped after his blood, I am not to his manners. I am not that to his manners. I am not, not a Jew. The way he is. O oh Lorenzo, if thou keep promise, I should end this strife. O oh Lorenzo, if you keep your promise, I will end this conflict. What is the conflict of being a Jew and being a lover to a Christian man? I shall end the strife being a Christian. So I want to end the strife of holding on to being a Jew. Rather, I want to become a Christian and I want to be your loving wife. So this is where the scene ends. It's such a short scene, which is quite important. Why is it important? I told you again, I'm repeating myself. We come to understand what kind of a man Shylock is, what are the intentions of Jessica in leaving Shylock's house and our heart goes out for Jessica. Though Jessica knows it is a sin to, of course, not to regard one's own father. Now comes Act 2, Scene 4, which is again a very short scene. Just for two pages the scene is. So let us get into the summary of the scene, a short sketch. Cresciano, Lorenzo, Salarino, Solano discusses their plans for Bassanio's dinner party. Mask that night. All of the preparations have not been made. For example, one of the things which they have neglected to do was that is the young boys to act torch bearers. Now they're planning how they would make Jessica elope from her father. They will act as torch bearers for the evening so that the gala party will be brightly lighted. This is to be a special evening and all details must be considered. While they are talking, Launcelot enters on his way to invite Shylock to the party and he delivers Jessica's letter to Lorenzo. Lorenzo reads it, reads it and sends Jessica a reply. What is it? Tell gently Jessica, I will not fail her. Speak it privately. Tell her that I will come to take her. Lorenzo then tells his friends that he has found a torch bearer and who is that none other than Jessica. And he confines to Grishanio that Jessica is going to disguise herself as a page tonight and elope with him. Furthermore, she will escape with enough gold and jewels for proper dowry. Lorenzo feels sure that Jessica, in a page's attire, can successfully disguise herself as a torch bearer from Bassanio's party and not be recognized. So this scene is more of a planning scene. Okay? So the mask the characters discuss never occurs, but the play has been cut off perhaps. Okay, that does not show. The mask is never shown. Maybe it has been cut out from there. Shakespeare felt that there was simply not enough time for a mask maybe and in that way 
However, the anticipation of mask causes the audience to just vision it. It's all a visual major. Does it suggest a youthful and romantic background to Jessica? Lorenzo's develop, Lorenzo and Jessica's love pair gets developed. Fair Jessica shall be my torch bearer, a mood which clearly antithetical to the self denying, self denying and puritanic, sorry, puritanical life of Shylock's household. So this lightheartedness is completely different to that of the highly puritanical way of the Shylock's house. So this scene is more of a preparation scene. Mask never happens, yet we are prepared for that. We can envision that. So let us start with this. Venice, a street. Enter Bresciano, Lorenzo, Salarino and Salonio. Nay, we will slink away in supper time. So we will slip off during supper time. Disguise us at my lodging and return all in hour. We'll disguise ourselves at my place and return in an hour. We have not made good preparation, Grishanio says. We have not spoke as yet of torch bearers, Salarino says. We have not yet arranged for torch bearers. Salonio says it's vile unless it may be quaintly ordered, it will be worthless until it is arranged in style. And better in mind, not undertook. So it should be, in my opinion, it would be better not to do it if it is not done in a perfect way. It is not, but four o'clock we have two hours to punish us. So we have just few two hours to get ourselves ready. Enter Launcelot with a letter. Just then Launcelot comes with a letter. Friend Launcelot, what's the news? What news do you have? And it shall please you to break up this. It shall seem to signify. If it pleases to you to break the seal, it will inform you. So break the seal of the letter to inform you. I know the hand. It is I know the handwriting. Your hand means the handwriting. It is of course met in a mere part for the whole. Hand is said but it means handwriting. In faith, it's a fair hand. Again, it talks about a pun. Hand here means handwriting and hand means the hand of the lady, that is Jessica. The fair hand who is whiter than the paper is writ on. His fairness is fairer than this paper on which it is written on. So it is pun, okay? The hand and writing in the hand. And of course it is hyperbole too. Why it is hyperbole? Because it is exaggeration of praising someone's beauty. It's a fair hand that writ. Love news in faith, so it's love news indeed. Launcelot, by your leave, sir, so if I may leave, sir, whither goes thou? So where are you going? Marry, sir, to beat my old master, the Jew, to supper tonight with my new master, the Christian. So in the name of Virgin Mary, I'm going to invite my old master, that is the Shylock, to have dinner tonight with my new master, that is the Christian, Masanio. Hold here, take this, gives money, tell gently Jessica, I will not fail her. So this is the message. So we have prepared that of course the love that they have conjured, the plan that they have conjured to sanctify their love will be led out truly. Go gentlemen, will you prepare for this mask tonight? So are you going to prepare for the mask tonight? I am provided of a torch bearer. Now if he says that I am already known of a torch bearer, I marry. I'll be gone about it straight. Indeed, I shall make the arrangements at once for the mask. And so will I. Both of them go away, Salarino and Salonio. Meet me in Grishenio. Lorenzo says, meet me in Grishenio and Grishenio's lodging some hour hence from one hour after one hour. It's good we do so. So it's good that we do so. Exuan Salarino and Salario. Was not that the letter from fair Jessica? Rishenio asks. It's not that the letter from the beautiful Jessica? I must needs tell thee all he hath directed. I must tell you everything she has instructed. How sh I shall take this part is important. It talks about the plan. So how sh I shall take her from a father's house 
What golden jewels she smarnished with, so she will run away with lots of jewels, money, riches. What pages suit she had in readiness, so she will have the uniform of a young boy, serving person of a high rank, uniform of a servant. If ever the Jew her father come to heaven, so if ever the Jew come to heaven, Okay, because the Jew is supposed to be in hell because that's how he is. It will be for this gentle daughter's sake. It will be just for the goodwill of Jessica. And never dare misfortune cross a foot. And I don't think misfortune or bad luck should ever cross her foot. So this line is of course talking about the belief that may misfortune dare befall Jessica unless on the pretext that she is a Jew, an offspring of a Jew who does not have faith in Christianity. That is the only misfortune can be brought to her. Rather, she's such a fine and a good woman that nothing bad should befall her. Unless she do it under this excuse, unless it comes to her under this excuse, that she is to issue to a faithless Jew, that she is a daughter to such a faithless Jew. Come, go with me. Peruse this as thou goest. So read this as you go. So read this letter as you go. Fair Jessica shall be my torch bearer. So we come with the end of the scene. And finally, the plan is revealed to us that fair Jessica will be a torch bearer. So everything ends as per the plan. We are almost in anticipation. And of course, in Act 2, Scene 5, we will see a complete different scene, an ironical scene of what happens in the plan uh, that Shylock tells Jessica that you should covet all the wealth of this house. And Jessica has already planned to elope with jewels. So that's what we are prepared for Act 2, Scene 5 which we will not be dealing today because it will be too long for you to understand but we are going to deal it in the next interaction of ours till then as i tell you read in between the lines stay happy stay blessed take good care of yourself and to remind you once again put in your feedbacks your comments your suggestions like the video and share with people out there so that the literature just goes beyond horizons. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye-bye.